My name is Dominic Sprano. I'm a production potter and ceramic educator. I currently work at the Art League of Long Island, and today I am going to show you how to throw, trim, carve, and decorate a tumbler. So to begin, I start by centering a one pound ball of clay. To do this, I push forward on my left and down with my right while squeezing water out of the sponge onto the clay. Once that I feel it's centered, I'll then move on to opening the clay. I like to use my two fingers, my middle finger and index finger, squeeze and gently pull up, and that allows me to pull a wall at the same time. Once that initial pull is done, I then grab my sponge and start pulling a wall fully all the way up to the top. With that pulled, I then switch to using my yellow rib, and that allows me to pull a tighter, straighter wall. And I'll do this about two times. The entire time I keep my elbows tucked into my body, resting on my thighs, and that keeps my hands nice and steady. I never do anything one-handed. I'm always using two hands in tandem, and gentle, smooth movement coming upward. If anything feels shaky, I release pressure and I relax my hands. I never push hard, I never squeeze, I never show aggression. I'm always trying to keep everything smooth and relaxed. Doing a little undercut here allows me to access the clay that I couldn't get to with the, with the excess there. Now I'll use a wood rib and push into the rib and bring my left hand upward and that creates a smoother wall. With the wall complete, I then trim using a pin tool. I slice into the top like I was using a scalpel. I never poke it. And then to compress and round out the rib, I'll use a soft sponge and just roll it back and forth and gently push down to create a smooth, rim that feels good to the mouth and tongue. I'll always make sure I take out any excess water that's inside the piece as well. That can create cracks. Finally, I'll do a small undercut, which allows me to pass my wire tool comfortably underneath the piece about three times. I'll then pour some water between myself and the piece using gentle pressure, pull it towards me and catch it. Now that the piece is ready to be trimmed, I first am going to center it. I rest my arm on my splash guard and I just feel for when the piece bumps. And I gently push it closer into the center. This can take some time, so don't be frustrated. When it's centered, I'll then use two coils that I'll squeeze out by hand, and I have a habit of rolling it on my jeans. And then I'll wrap it around the piece and push into the coils using oppositional force so that way the piece doesn't scoot forward or back and stays where I left it. Then I'll use my large loop tool and go over the piece about three times to smooth out the bottom. I like to use three as a nice rule. It's easy to remember. And whenever I use any of my trimming tools, I always do it in threes. If you find you only need two or maybe you need four, that's fine as well. But three is a good way for any beginner to just keep that in mind, to do everything three times. Slow, steady movements are key. Again, keeping my elbows tucked into my body, resting on my thighs. It helps keep my hands nice and steady and smooth. Never rush. Take your time when you're, when you're working. I use the flat side of my double loop, loop tool to delineate where the line is for the inside of the hip foot. And then I will switch to the rounded side to carve out the inside of the foot. Again, I do this three passes.
slow, steady movement, I use my left thumb as a guide for my right hand and the tool itself. Once that's done, I flip and use the flat side, again about three passes, to make it nice and smooth on the inside. Finally, I switch back to the loop tool just to give the outside a little bit more refinement and smooth it out to my desire. I also use my larger loop tool. It helps take out a wider swath and keep it a little bit straighter and smooth to the touch. And when it comes to trimming, I like to do this slowly by hand on a banding wheel and I'll use sculptural carving tools, which you could find at any Michaels or Blick or local art supply shop. They should have something like that. These are loop tools that are small and have acute edges on it, which make it easy to make cuts, or they're round so you can create uh, nice circular fluid shapes. I try never to influence how I'm gonna carve. I just like to let my hands flow. I tend to create fluid movement and fluid carvings. That's just my aesthetic. If you like to do it more geometrically, that's perfectly good. If you have a great uh, hand skill in drawing and you want to try and carve out an actual picture, please feel free to do so. Everyone's aesthetic is unique. But the one thing I love about carving, it does make your work look like your work. There are a lot of pieces that all look the same, but when you carve it, it really becomes unique to you. This is also some of the most enjoyable process, uh, points in the process of making anything, whether it's a tumbler, a bowl, a vase, because you can really allow your creativity and imagination to flow here, whereas before you're just sort of creating the canvas that you're going to work on. Now that the piece is bone dry, I will clean it up using a green scouring pad. First, I use the scouring pad on the inside as well as the body, and then I will go back and use a smooth, damp sponge to refine the roughness of the scouring pad. It's like using different kinds of grit in uh, sandpaper. The reason I do this against any dings, burrs, uh, mishaps, imperfections off the piece and smooths it out so it feels nice to the touch. Once it's cleaned, I put down a bone dry sponge and I place the piece on top of it. This allows me to keep my arms still and my hands steady so that way I can carefully paint in whatever colors I'm using into the cuts, creating an inlay. It's important that you don't rush this process and you enjoy yourself. Finally, when that's all done, I take away any excess painting with some very gentle, soft scraping with a sharp little tool. You don't need to press hard, and I do recommend to wipe up as you do this so you don't breathe in a lot of dust. What you don't see here is, is that I constantly was put, throwing the dust in my bucket. And there you have your finished product. Thank you so much for watching. I hope today's lesson was very helpful for you. Please feel free to like and subscribe and recommend this channel. Please feel free to find me on Instagram. It's Sperano underscore arts. Find me on Facebook, again, Sperano Arts, or just go to my website, SperanoArts.com. If you're interested in taking personal lessons with me, you can check me out on the Art League website. I believe it's artleagueli.org, and you can register for a class there. Thank you again. Take care.